Hi everyone. In the series of question and answers from industrial microbiology, in this video we are going to discuss about one more question that is write a brief account on immobilization methods. So how can we write an answer to this immobilization methods means first of all we have to define what is meant by immobilization. In simple the immobilization of any cell or enzyme can be defined as the process of arresting the free movement of the cells or the enzymes is going to be called as cell immobilization if you are arresting the cell. If we are arresting the enzyme then we call it as enzyme immobilization and the specific cell or the enzyme which are being immobilized are called immobilizer cells or enzymes. So in uh, another definition immobilization means associating the enzymes or the cells with an insoluble matrix so this insoluble matrix is also going to be called as carrier or it can also be called as a support so that we can reuse this enzyme or the cell which we are making it to be immobilized so this is the overall two different types of the enzymes whichever you feel free uh, uh, easy to write you can use it nothing wrong then here is an example if we take the normal enzyme that is soluble enzyme with the substrate you will get the product and we cannot reuse the enzyme but when we are going to take the immobilized enzyme when it combines with the substrate our product is going to be uh, formed at the same time we can reuse the enzyme to combine with one more substrate so this is a very important step in the industrial processes. Then what are the advantages of this immobilization methods? Why we have to read? So coming to the advantages, uh, the product can be easily recovered and we can uh, separate the enzyme and the product very easily. So purification cost gets reduced and the enzyme can be reused or repeatedly and the enzyme generally gets stabilized after adsorption. And there are a few disadvantages regarding this immobilization methods also. Let's see. Loss of catalytic properties for some enzymes and some enzymes become unstable during the process of immobilization. And we have to put the additional cost for this immobilization. And there are going to be certain limitations for using this immobilization methods then coming to the methods of immobilization so we are having basically uh, the immobilization methods are classified into four categories the first one is a uh, adsorption the second one is entrapment or encapsulation the third one is covalent bonding and the fourth one is a cross-linking out of all these four, in this video we are going to discuss only two uh, types of uh, methods one is the adsorption and second one is the entrapment adsorption is nothing but we are taking a support carrier matrix whatever the name that you can keep and we are fixing our enzyme to it and we will pass whatever the substrate that we want to convert into the product to it and enzyme is going to be fixed at that position only so this is going to be called as adsorption let's see in detail about the first one adsorption so coming to the adsorption as i told you this is going to be uh, simply the enzymes are getting immobilized by simply mixing the enzymes with the matrix or support and their appropriate conditions that we have to maintain because if this ph and the ionic strength uh, is not going to be proper then there won't be any adsorption that means that the binding between the enzyme and the matrix or the support and we can easily separate the matrix as well as our enzyme or the cell and this immobilization method by adsorption is going to be of a very easiest and the fastest method when we compare the other three methods then what are the different supports or the matrices that we are using for the adsorption method means we can use aluminium oxide clay glass so these are all going to be considered as mineral supports but as uh, organic supports are also there where we use the starch 
modified sepharose and ion exchange resins which are going to be classified as a organic support and uh, when we check the enzymes of the cells in the adsorption method they are going to be connected with the matrix or the support by certain bonds and these bonds are going to be of a very low le energy levels that is the reason why we can easily separate both the enzymes and the matrix so what are those forces which are going to uh, involved in binding these enzymes and as well as the matrix or the support so we have we can have the van der waal forces then ionic and hydrogen bonds as well as hydrophobic interactions and these all forces are going to be of very weak forces but in large they are going to be of uh, if they are going to be more in number so that strength of binding is uh, sufficient to hold the enzyme to the support and a number of enzymes such as soya bean beta amylase streptavidin beta galactosidase d amino acid oxidase all these such type of the enzymes have been immobilized successfully by using this technique that is adsorption technique then what are the advantages of this uh, adsorption method so carrying this uh, adsorption method is very easy and we don't want any reagents where we are going to minimize the chemical reactions then minimum activation step is going to be involved and it is the cheapest method and less disruptive to protein than chemical methods there are few disadvantages also the main disadvantage is it is going to be easily deabsorbed by factors like ph temperature fluctuations changes in the substrate and the ionic concentration so this is about the first method adsorption then coming to the second method entrapment so here the entrapment is uh, going to be defined as uh, immobilization of enzymes or molecules can be performed by the physical entrapping the enzymes or cells inside natural polymers like agar agarose gel and gelatin through thermo reversal polymerization but in alginate and keratin by ionotropic gelatin that means you are going to entrap uh, you are going to be circulating or arresting that is going to be called as entrapment and there are number of ways in which cells or enzymes can be entrapped they are number 1 inclusion in gels so that means we are going to take the gels which are going to be of entrapping the enzymes in them so here you can see entrap in the gels and the polymerization occurs in a variety of ways we can take the radical formation by in the polyacrylamidal gel by radiation method polyvinyl alcohol or by light for a photosensible resin natural polymers like starch alginates these are all going to be used for the polymerization then the second one is going to be of inclusion in fibers where you are going to have the entrapment in the fibers like this so these are going to be of a tube like structures in which they are going to be entrapped and the substrate will flow through this so here enzyme supported on a fiber format that is a mixture containing the polymer and the enzyme is extruded to have the enzyme trapped in the fiber format and used uh, usually in uh, cellulose things then coming to the third one inclusion in micro capsules so here uh, the enzymes are going to be entrapped in the capsule like structures so that's why we call it as inclusion in micro capsules so during the formation of an emulsion containing a hydrophobic monomer in an organic solvent and a hydrophilic monomer and the enzyme in water the hydrophobic uh, monomer is going to polymerize at the air water interface forming a micro capsule with enzyme molecules trapped within it so this can be a bubble like structure where enzymes are present and these monomeric mixtures are used in the microscopic micro capsule formation are polyamyl uh, and polybasic acid chloride this is one combination and the second one is polyphenol and polyisocyanate so these are the different uh, 
ways by which we are going to entrap the enzymes or the cells. And coming to the advantages of this entrap me method, first one is uh, it's very fast and it is very cheap and mild conditions are required and less chance of conformational changes in the enzyme. There are a few disadvantages of this entrapment method. One is leakage of enzyme, then poor diffusion limitations, then chances of microbial contamination. So these are the two different methods of uh, immobilization methods. One is adsorption and entrapment. The complete topic will be discussed in another video. So here for the question and answers, we have discussed only two methods that is adsorption and entrapment. So we will meet with uh, another question in the next video. Thank you.